Hi everyone, I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. Welcome to Worlds at the Ranch for Thursday, December 29th, 2022. This episode is going to be about unwanted behaviors that might emerge as your snakes are learning target training. And this is going to be applicable to all species of snakes. It's come up in most species of snakes that I have worked with, one or more of these emergent behaviors. But we're going to use our royal pythons as an example, as I have several videos of royals here at the ranch doing some of these behaviors. Not every snake does these behaviors. They don't always come up, but these are possible things that might come up during the process of your snake learning what it means to follow a target, respond to a target, just things that might come up during the target training process that you may not have expected. Those emergent behaviors that may occur as your snakes are learning are targeting the wrong thing, like your cell phone, your camera, they may target you, the trainer or the keeper, or they may be targeting the scent of the reinforcer because we typically keep the reinforcer out of view until we're ready to deliver it once the snake gets to that stage. And they may pick up on that scent and be looking or moving in the direction of that scent instead of the direction of the target. They may be responding to historical antecedents. Those are things that you do to prepare for the session. And snakes are not stupid. They recognize that certain behaviors you do Maybe certain equipment that you set up, changes you make to the lighting in the room or their enclosure, and just opening their habitat may predict that a training session is going to start, but in their mind it may predict that they are about to get fed or that they're about to engage in this target training session, and you might see that they start to prepare for that before you've officially asked them to do anything. This is not necessarily a problem. And then they may just have a premature response when you start the session. And that could be striking up the target. It could be just moving quickly in your direction before you've even engaged them with the target or directed them to do something specific. And that's usually due to lack of inhibitory control or impulsivity. It can be just out of habit or prepotent response. They understand ah, the target means food. I'm going to earn reinforcement. And they get so excited about that that they act without thinking. So I'm gonna show you some examples of these things and we're gonna talk about it. Let's discuss this first behavior that might emerge and that is your snake starts targeting something you don't want them to target, thinking that that is part of a target training session. In this case, Mesmer is targeting me and my camera. I'm not feeding him, I'm not doing a target training session, but he sees me there with the camera taking a video of him and he has associated that with the target training session and so he is targeting me. He's really probably targeting the camera because sometimes you'll notice they'll do this if you set up a tripod with the camera on it, they'll do this behavior. So he has learned that the camera or the tripod or me behind the camera is a predictor of a training session and then he has the possibility of earning reinforcement but we don't want him to always target the camera or the keeper. So how do we prevent this from becoming an established behavior? Well, we open the snake's enclosure lots and lots of times and film them, hold the camera up, and we don't train them on that day. We do this multiple times over and over again until the snake realizes that this behavior is meaningless, that my human comes up to my door and opens it all the time and holds this rectangular object in front of me, and it's really meaningless for me, so I'm not going to expend my energy on it. The other thing that you can do is during a training session, you can really solidify to the snake that instead of looking at you or looking in the direction of the food reinforcer because they smell it, that they need to turn in the direction of the target and follow the target. If this had been a beginner snake, I would have already reinforced her because she made a very significant turn and oriented towards that target. She's not a beginner learner. And I'm going to move that target far enough away from me in the complete opposite direction that she cannot even see me anymore and that she is 180 degrees away from where the food reinforcer is, which is behind me on the tongs. So she has done that and now I'm going to give her the reinforcement and this should solidify in her mind that the target and engagement with that is what earns her reinforcement.
Now let's talk about the second behavior that might emerge, which is that the snake recognizes historical antecedents. And those are things that precede the formal training session that the snakes start to recognize as meaning that a formal training session is about to begin. I don't necessarily think this is a bad thing unless they become so worked up and so excited about the session about to start that they have some issues with impulsivity. But I opened the door and set up the camera and tripod and I left. And you can see that he's obviously responding to that. And he's looking around and waiting for something to happen. But then when I get back, he is ready to go. He moved in my direction and he follows the target and he engages very well in the training session. And so I think recognizing these behaviors from the keeper or the handler and these things that predict a training session is about to start might be a good thing because they get the snake's brain engaged and they prep them for the session and then it goes very well because they expect what's coming and they know what to do. Now I left for a little while and came back and you see that now he's ignoring the camera and he's ignoring the tripod and he didn't respond in any way until I got back with the target. And he does a very good job during the second repetition. So I think that recognizing the behaviors that precede a formal session starting are not necessarily bad. This is another behavior that might emerge and I see it a lot with Royal Pythons and that's when you deliver the reinforcement, they become startled by it or maybe a little bit afraid of it. I don't see it as much in other species as I do in Royals. If that happens, don't chase the snake with the reinforcer, just try to hold it steady where it is with the target and let them approach it. For those who are questioning if you're able to start target training older snakes, the answer is yes. Fulcrum did not come to live with us until he was five and a half years old. He came from a rack system. That's all he ever knew. And he started target training at five and a half years old. And he is now seven years old. And as you can see, he had no problem learning that behavior. He's doing very well. Let's talk about the third thing I mentioned that can emerge, which is overexcitement, overexuberance, lack of inhibition, impulsivity, just getting so excited about what they think is about to happen that they strike out or they move excessively. And I don't even have the target with me. I haven't set up the tripod. I don't have any of the equipment. I was bringing it into the room and I was going to set up for a training session and she got so excited that she just struck out into the air and it didn't benefit her at all. So what do you do about this? You ignore it. You just keep walking around in front of the enclosure, setting up, breaking down, doing all of these activities without her earning any reinforcement and without a training session until she learns that that's a waste of energy and that she needs to wait for a formal training session to occur and that she needs to deliberately interact with that target in some way in order to earn the reinforcement. In other words, she needs to think first, act later. And so just ignore unwanted behavior and make sure that you are reinforcing the behavior that you do want. I want to point out that as I was training these two snakes, as I was feeding these two snakes, as I had my training equipment, my tongs, my target, and my bowl of rodents next to me, my Morelia Bradley Sunspear, who's going on six years old, was right next to me. She has been very good at acquiring context learning, which means that she knows no behavior that she does during this time is going to benefit her because she's learned in this context, none of what's happening behind her impacts her or applies to her whatsoever. She has learned that unless I'm directing my attention at her and unless that target is directed at her and she is asked to engage, that there's no sense wasting her energy and she very quietly waited here for her turn and did a very good job. Really quickly, if you're having an issue in general with your snake striking at the target, I'm going to go over some things very quickly, but I do have a detailed PDF booklet about all sorts of strategies that you can use to get rid of striking at the target. So quickly, you can wait for the snake to stop striking and then reinforce calm engagement with the target. You can pause the session, disengage and go away for a few seconds or maybe a minute and then start the session again. You can reinforce sooner or you can position the target further away and reinforce the snake before it has a chance to strike or once the striking has stopped and it even looks at the target calmly. 
If none of these things work and the snake is just over exuberant and over excited, pause for a few seconds and then re-engage and pair the target with food for the session because you don't want to withhold food because the training session hasn't gone well. And then just start again with a new strategy next time. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this beneficial. And as always, I appreciate your interest in animal training and behavior. Until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.